Uh, hi, everyone. My name is uh, Nicholas Christian. I'm uh, with Datacratic, and uh, in my talk today, um, I've slightly changed the topic, the, not the topic, the title. Um, I gave a really broad title to give myself a lot of leeway to, to prepare a presentation. So I'll be talking about uh, data science and unsupervised machine learning with uh, Scikit-learn. PyData, turns out, is not a software package. It's a conference. I was confused by their website. Uh, so uh, I work at Datacratic. We're really proud to be a, a founded in Montreal startup. We were founded in 2009. Um, there's uh, almost 30 of us now. Uh, we're uh, 27 in Montreal, uh, one in Ottawa, and uh, three in New York, which adds up to 31. So I hope we come with someone. Um, we basically specialize in machine learning and high performance systems, and we use a fair bit of Python um, to, do, to do machine learning, and that's kind of one of the things that I'll, I'll be talking about today. And we're happy to uh, offer everyone this food tonight. So we hope you enjoy it. Um, so in this talk, um, I'm going to present basically a slightly sort of different way to look at uh, graph analysis and visualization than, uh, than some of you might be used to, um, uh, as an introduction to some algorithms which I think are really cool, uh, namely truncated SVD, k-means, uh, and t-sne. So if you haven't heard of these algorithms, I'll give a bit of an explanation on how they work, uh, and mostly just through this demo, uh, give you a feel of what you can do with them. Um, I'll be sort of walking through this explanation using scikit-learn uh, as an explanation, uh, and then I'll finish off with sort of some more general thoughts uh, on this approach to, uh, to data analysis. Uh, if you want to follow along, uh, there's a one-page HTML version of this, so I've got some interactive visualizations. If you want to sort of interact with them on your laptop, it's uh, opensource.datacratic.com slash mtl550. Um, and all the materials and everything uh, for this presentation are available uh, on GitHub. So. Without further ado, uh, who here spends any appreciable amount of time on Reddit? OK, I don't know much about Reddit, but I do now, uh, thanks to this uh, preparing for this. I didn't know much, but I do now, thanks to uh, preparing for this presentation. So basically, Reddit is the front page of the internet. It's a big discussion board. It has sub-discussion boards, which are called subreddits, uh, which have names, and people can kind of post uh, all sorts of things to them. Um, and I found this paper called Navigating the Massive World of Reddit, Using Backbone Networks to maximize your interests in social media. So the link is right there. It's an archive.org paper. Um, and basically, in 2013, they did a big scrape of a bunch of Reddit uh, information. And they collected information on users who posted to multiple subreddits. Um, and they, they grabbed, I think, 850,000 users' uh, worth of information, which is some appreciable like one-sixth or something, uh, a pretty appreciable fraction of, uh, of Reddit's population. Um, and uh, they basically did some graph analysis on it. So they said that two, Reddit, two subreddits are linked if uh, a user posted some percentage of their posts to uh, each of them. Uh, they did a little visualization using an open source tool called Gephi, uh, using the open word layout, layout algorithm. Um, and uh, this is kind of what they came up with. So each little dot here is, uh, is a subreddit, a uh, sub-discussion board. And uh, they've conveniently sort of highlighted a few different things. So, uh, over here, you've got programming and pornography, My Little Pony is that's on the cluster, video games, soccer, sports. So this is other people's work, and the, the link is there. And I encourage you to, to read it if it interests you. Um, but basically, I'm going to use this data set as kind of a jumping off point for, uh, for my demo. So uh, the way they did this is there's nothing wrong with it. It's a totally natural approach to sort of graph analysis and visualization. But I want to show you sort of another way of doing things uh, with scikit-learn and friends. So scikit-learn is my opinion, rapidly becoming the sort of de facto machine learning library for Python. Um, there are others for sort of deep learning, but uh, for lots of the nuts and bolts of machine learning, it's kind of your go-to. Uh, it works well in conjunction with SciPy and NumPy. I often have trouble making the distinction between SciPy and NumPy. Um, and it's part of the sort of PyData toolbox. So if you go to pydata.org, there's a bunch of stuff listed there, uh, notably Pandas and Bokeh, which both of which I'll be using here. So. Um, it's a really neat little library, a big library. It's got a collection of algorithms, sort of group by family, and a bunch of utilities for pre-processing uh, data and uh, doing machine learning by month. So you'll be seeing a bit more of a uh, scikit-learn in a minute. So let's take a look at the data that uh, I'll, be, I'll be looking at. So uh, I've got the link here. It's publicly available data. Um, if you just look at the first few lines, what you've got, it's sort of a ragged CSV. Uh, so the first, the first field is always just some number, which is a, an anonymized user ID. And then you've got a comment, the limited list of the subreddits that that user has posted some number of things to. So the first one here, posted to politics, trees, and pics. The next one, metal, ask Reddit, tattoos, uh, a whole bunch of them. So we can take a kind of a, a better look at the data by, by putting it through pandas and getting it to draw a little table for us. So you can see the various things. 
So the third row there, you've got Crohn's disease, fourth row, birth control, uh, advice animals, various other things. So the first step to what I want to show you is to load this data into a sparse matrix. Um, what I want, basically, is I want a really, really big 2D array that's 850,000 columns wide and however many subreddits there are, which is 50, uh, 15,000 tall. And this matrix will basically be zero except for where a, a user posted in a subreddit. I want it to be one. This is a big binary sparse matrix. Um, so of all the things that I'm going to show you, this step was the most technically challenging, for me at least. Uh, the first sort of six times I wrote different functions to import this code. It took about 20 minutes runtime, so it took me a couple days before I hit on the, this particular bit of code to, uh, to run in about 10 seconds to load this arguably not too large file. So I had a bit of challenge, a bit of a challenge sort of getting, uh, getting this data into, into a sparse uh, matrix. Um, I won't spend too, too long talking about how I did it, but ultimately um, I'm using the CSR matrix uh, constructor from SciPy, um, and all this code exists basically to feed this one call here. Um, and if I look at the, the shape of the matrix at the end, I've got something that's 15,000 tall and 850,000 wide. Yep. Why that one? Why CSR? Um, to be honest, it didn't seem to make much difference downstream which one I used. And it also didn't seem to make much difference uh, in terms of construction speed, which one I used. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's also the one that seems to have the, the fewest disadvantages on the SciPy uh, documentation. <laughs> so. Um, so is this big data? No. <laughs> uh, the file is only about 80, 82 megs. It doesn't take up that much RAM. It's, uh, it's a sparse matrix, but it's certainly unwieldy. Um, one thing, it's really, really wide. 850,000 columns. This is a lot of columns. Um, very, very sparse. It's only 0.06% full. So many, 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 many zeros in my matrix. Uh, and it's binary. So it's, you know, there's not a whole lot of texture and handholds for, uh, for data algorithms there. So the first thing we're going to do, and this is the first algorithm, I'm gonna, a family of algorithms I'm going to introduce you to, is a dimensionality reduction. So basically, this is a family of algorithms for addressing uh, these, these three things, sort of very, very wide matrices, very sparse uh, and binary. Um, other names for this sort of family of techniques, <coughs> composition, uh, vector space embedding, compression, feature extraction. You can think of this family of algorithms being to matrices, what you know, JPEG or PNG compression is to, uh, to images, what MP3 compression is to music, what uh, MPEG is to video. It's basically compressing, uh, compressing the data. So uh, after I run my dimensionality reduction algorithm, the data will basically be as wide as I ask it to be. So right now it's almost a million uh, columns. It's going to be about as wide as I ask it to be. And so the, the narrower I ask for my matrix, the lossier the compression will be. Um, the output matrix will be dense. It won't have nearly as many zeros. Um, and, uh, and it'll be all uh, continuous values. So scikit-learn has a decomposition package, which has a, a few different algorithms in this family. The one I've chosen to use uh, is truncated SVD. So, uh, truncated SVD, SVD stands for Singular Vector Decomposition, which is a particular linear algebra um, algorithm or decomposition. Um, and truncated, basically we're going to only do part of this computation. Uh, I'm not actually sufficiently well versed to explain to you in detail what the math is, and this is not the right form, but uh, I've provided a nice link here uh, in the book called uh, Mining of Massive Datasets. Chapter 11 is all about dimensionality reduction. There's a really good uh, treatment of the math here. Basically, I'm going to focus on how to call it, and we'll explore the output, and hopefully give, give you guys a sense of what, uh, what this algorithm can do sort of by demonstration. So to, uh, to use it, it's actually very simple. I just load up the truncated SVD uh, function from the, from the scikit-learn package. Um, I'm going to get a normalizer from the preprocessing package, and I'm going to call it. So I pass in my very, very large matrix, and I get a set of embedded coordinates out. Um, I've asked it for 100 columns. Um, and that's what I get. I get a matrix that's 15,000 uh, rows long and 100, 100 columns wide. So the output um, is kind of neat. Each row uh, in this matrix is like a set of uh, coordinates in a 100-dimensional space where each subreddit is located. And this, this space is now continuous. It's real valued. Um, each column is sort of one of the axes in this 100-dimensional space. Um, and they're ordered. So the first axis contains most of the information, or the, the, uh, the most information that it could get into a single axis. And then as you add axes, it's sort of adding less and less and less and less information. Sort of like if you, you know, sort of uh, raise the quality of a JPEG, uh, you sort of, your file size grows bigger and bigger and bigger, and your JPEG gets more and more and more uh, high fidelity. 
So we can look at, we can sort of quantify this, we can look at how much of the original matrix we've lost through this um, by, by looking at this graph. So essentially this is the sort of cumulative variance that's captured by adding additional columns. The first column contains almost, uh, almost you know, slightly over 20% of the, of the information in the matrix. The first two is basically a quarter. By the time we get to 100, uh, we've only basically thrown away 40% of the data in the matrix. And for our purposes, this is fine. Depending on the application that you're that you're interested in, it might not. So, uh, I actually looked uh, through the different scores that all the different subreddits uh, come up with in the, along the various axes, and I sort of picked out a few of these uh, hundred dimensions uh, to show you. So, first of all, I told you that the first few dimensions are the most informative ones. So, what is it that uh, that's the most informative? If you look at what scores high on uh, on the the first few dimensions. You get Ask Reddit, Today I Learned, World News, Politics, Funny Videos. These are basically the big subreddits. This is where a lot of people post. This is sort of very big uh, general interest stuff. And if you scroll down to the bottom, you get a bunch of rather more obscure stuff. So the first couple axes, I've gone in and sort of scanned them by hand. Uh, I've given them the name big to small. And the first few were kind of like that. Uh, then I went, I went sort of a little deeper. Uh, axis number 44 is pretty interesting. At the very top, up here, you've got uh, Paris SG, soccer box, football, football media, FTL strikers, soccer, gunners. This is all a bunch of soccer teams. And if you go to the very bottom, uh, you've got US militia, gun porn, brass swap, hunting, long range. So along this axis, the 44th most informative axis, you've got soccer and guns. Okay. Um, you can kind of go down and do this a few, a few more times. So I've done it. Uh, I spent a little too long looking at this data this weekend. So there's an axis number 51. On one end, you've got programming. On the other end, you've got food. Uh, there's another axis. On one end, you've got music. On the other one, you've got bikes. So this is kind of this 100-dimensional space that has been constructed by this, uh, this algorithm, which is kind of neat. So uh, this doesn't say that you know, soccer is the opposite of guns. It just says that if you try and compress this, uh, this, this large matrix, at some point, you get uh, an axis from soccer to guns, which is informative and adds some information to your uh, to your matrix. So tables are kind of ugly. You guys in the back might not be able to see it. Uh, let's, make, uh, let's make a visualization. So um, Python library called Bokeh. It's really, really cool. Uh, it's a visualization library, and it makes it really, really easy to add uh, hover interaction to a scatter plot interactively in IPython, and it makes really nice exports for my presentation. So basically, um, I made a scatter plot. This is a map, uh, a subreddit map by the most informative, informative dimensions. So there's dimension zero across the bottom. Up and down, you've got dimension one. I told you that the first couple of dimensions were sort of from big to small. And what you get here is in the bottom uh, <clears throat> bottom right here, you get Ask Reddit. So the rest of these are the ones that I mentioned, sort of politics, videos, pictures, uh, advice animals, all these sort of very, very large Reddits. So and everything else tends to be in the corner. This is not actually all that interesting. Uh, let's try some other ones. Let's do the soccer guns one with the food programming one. This is more interesting. Um, uh, if you mouse over, you're going to see a whole bunch of soccer-related stuff over here. You're going to see the coding, programmer humor, Python, CompSci, JavaScript. I don't know if this is showing up. Over there, gun politics, um, firearms, AK-47. I don't know why that is a subreddit. Um, and then you've got food, food porn, not porn about food, um, recipes, Doctor Who. Yeah. You know, Doctor Who scores high on the food programming axis. Um, so uh, it'd be kind of cool to get some colors going on this. Um, basically, you know, there's a whole bunch of stuff about food. It'd be nice to color all the food stuff one color. There's a whole bunch of stuff about soccer. It'd be nice to color all this soccer stuff in one color. Uh, this problem in unsupervised machine learning is called clustering. Uh, it basically exists to solve this one problem, you know, grouping items into buckets based on some kind of similarity. Uh, Scikit-learn has a clustering package. Here's the sort of demo image from their clustering package. So uh, each of these columns here is one clustering algorithm, and they've kind of shown how it would color these various data sets. Um, the clustering algorithm that I've chosen to use for this demonstration is called k-means. Um, K-means basically, it's called K-means because you take K points uh, and you try to move them about your 100-dimensional space until they sit roughly in the middle of clusters, so close to the centroid or the mean of the cluster. Um, there's lots, lots has been written about this algorithm. You guys can go look up if you want. Uh, using it is just about as easy as uh, using the, the truncated SVD. You sort of load it up from, uh, from scikit-learn, 
um, and ask it for however many clusters you want. Um, I uh, cheated a little bit here. I played with the um, the embedded coordinates ma matrix that I got from uh, from SVD. Didn't give that good results, so I actually turned that matrix into a rank matrix. So I kind of transformed my space a little bit just to get some nicer results. So you can come talk to me afterwards about why I did that and why it works. Um, but I, I wanted to get some nice visualization. So if you look at for each of the 20 clusters, what the biggest subreddits in each cluster is, you get this. Um, you get the number 11 here, drugs, hip hop heads, woe dude, seduction. Okay, that kind of speaks for itself. Um, at the bottom here, you get NFL, soccer, NBA, hockey. Um, at the very top, you get libertarian, conspiracy, philosophy, economics. So, in my head anyway, just, you know, my brain is parsing this as making sense, so we'll get, we're going to go with that. Um, sorry, I got to go back here, this thing gets stuck. Um, so uh, we've done our clustering. Now let's do some visualization in color. So um, you can't really see the as well, but all the soccer stuff over here is light blue. All the food stuff here is sort of a teal. All the gun stuff here is purple. All the programming stuff is, uh, is green. So this appears to work. And now we can kind of see some interesting stuff. So what's this, uh, what's this orange cluster here? Well, it turns out that as you move down the soccer guns axis towards soccer, you get a bunch of um, a bunch of subreddits which are devoted to different places like Ireland and cricket and Olympics and Liverpool. So basically along this axis you get a lot of different sort of interests in other sort of non-US centric sports and non-US centric places. And if you look on the other side of my if you look on the other side over here, you get NFL, cars, guns, US centric um, subreddits. So this is kind of, you know, already this clustering, this pulling apart of the data is telling us some, some interesting stuff. Um, but we combine all of these dimensions into one big plot. Um, turns out that this problem that we have is basically the same as any, any basic map maker. The map maker has you know, a 3D sphere and he wants to make a 2D, uh, a 2D projection of it. And so there's a whole bunch of different ways to make a globe into a flat thing. Um, we want to make a 100 dimensional space into a flat thing. Turns out if you look at a bunch of scatter plots uh, like this one, they all kind of look like these little starbursty shapes. So you, you can think in a hundred dimensions, you kind of got this sort of long, elongated starburst thing, and we want to turn it into a, a flat picture. Um, there's a family of algorithms for that. It's called manifold learning. Um, basically, uh, it, it, it exists to solve just this problem. It, it says that, sorry, based on the assumption that your data, even though it's in a high dimensional space, is actually lower dimensional than the space. It's going to sort of try and flatten it out uh, into a picture. So, scikit-learn has a manifold learning package. Each of, these, each of these little squares here uh, is an algorithm that shows how those how sorry, is a picture of how this algorithm would embed um, that data set into low dimensions. Um, the one that I've chosen to use is called TSNI down here. So TSNI. Uh, the original paper about TSNI is really awesome. I really enjoyed reading it. I don't enjoy reading scientific papers all that much. Um, TSNI stands for T stochastic neighbor embedding. Not particularly informative. Uh, the math is a little bit involved. Basically, it does what you would expect an algorithm like this to do. It tries to lay out points so that local structure, microstructure of your data is preserved, and the macro structure is preserved, and it kind of sacrifices some of the stuff in the middle. So it tries to make it so that the stuff that you care about isn't particularly distorted. Um, it gets pretty good human readable results on most real world data sets. Uh, there's a bunch of really cool examples uh, on, on their web page. Um, and using it, I think you guys will get the hang of it. It's basically you import TSNI and then you call the fit method um, on the data. Really so what does it give? This is my version of the map that, uh, that I showed you in the beginning. Um, to my eye, anyway, I guess I've spent too long looking at these sort of TSNI projections. But this is like, you know, pretty well clustered. You've got this big red thing over there. You've got some nicely isolated little subgroups here, here. And if you start mousing over, and this is where you can lose, lose a huge amount of time if you pull this up on your browser. Um, You've got all this stuff is cars, 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 cars. Okay, so cars is pretty isolated. Um, all the soccer stuff ended up over here. Um, so I'm not going to spend a whole bunch of time mousing over because I am. I only have 10 minutes left. But I did go through by hand and label it all, and I'm going to point out a couple of interesting things. So um, music is over here. Pot is over here. Turns out the code name for Reddit uh, on Reddit for pot is trees, as I discovered. Um, fitness, all to do with like CrossFit and losing weight and stuff is over here. 
um, what I call core, sort of the really big subreddits, Ask Reddit, Ask Science, IAMA, that sort of thing. Um, and then you get some really interesting stuff, like sports is over here, NBA has its own little thing, soccer, NFL, hockey's up in the corner. Um, Canada seems to be its own little space here. Uh, Canadian, Canadian cities, provinces, and universities each have their own subreddit, and it's kind of localized them all, so Canada's a little insular. Um, and speaking of places, U.S. places are over here. U.S. schools are separately identified, and then right next to sports, because in the U.S., schools and sports are quite strongly identified. Non-U.S. places are over here, and the U.K. is over here, right near soccer. Um, so you know, you get a sense that this has actually done a not too unreasonable job of trying to flatten down this highly multidimensional thing uh, into just two D. Um, it's uh, you've got gaming up in the corner, Minecraft is in the far corner, and then each of these little blobs here is a sub game. Uh, not that familiar with gaming, but you have Dota, StarCraft, World of Warcraft, everything has its own little cluster. So this is basically the uh, final output of what I wanted to show you. So let's take a, let's take a step back uh, to what we've done. We loaded a, a data set into a big sparse matrix. Um, the data set started over here, so we imported it into a sparse matrix. We ran truncated SVD to sort of compress it uh, and get a smaller matrix to work with. Um, and then from on that, on the output of that, we ran k-means to get clusters and tsne to get xy coordinates. And we used bokeh to visualize it. And the sort of we mapped the size of the subreddit, uh, the size of the subreddit onto the size of the, the circle. And we used the name of the subreddit uh, as the hover label for our visualization. Uh, so what? I gave this presentation at work last week, and someone says to me, "Well, Nick, I don't care about Reddit. Why? Why do I care about this?" Um, so I actually have a hidden agenda in giving this presentation. Um, my hidden agenda is to, to use these tools uh, on a data set that I feel like most people here could relate to or could understand. I could sort of show you these clusters and be like, yes, these are clusters, these make sense. Um, and then convince you that you can try this on your own data. So this is scikit-learn, it's really easy. Most of these calls are just one call. Um, so that you'll feel confident that if you run this algo on data that you can't a priori reason about or that isn't this kind of data, uh, when TSNE gives you a bunch of uh, a bunch of points all clustered, you might believe that there's something in common to these points. You have to let me know whether I, I convinced you. Um, as a completely different example, using essentially the same code, and it's also posted here, um, I basically used uh, used this technique on on words. And when you use this technique on words, it's called latent semantic analysis. Um, so what I did was I loaded up a sparse matrix of words versus tweets that contain those words. Um, I grabbed a public data set, a few million tweets, I think 3, 000, 3 million from, uh, from 2010. <coughs> I used the same trick, truncated SVD and, uh, and TSNE. And uh, here's my annotated thing. So you don't get nearly as much separation because guess what? There's a lot more words and there's a lot more dimensions that words can fall into. But just as a sort of quick hit highlight on interesting things that came out of this, uh, this little cluster here labeled star up. It's all words that can precede the word up, like stood up, fired up, cranked up. All these words that sort of frequently show up before up, all are clustered over here. All these ones are uh, here are star up, so all the words that precede out, find out, um, you know, locked out, shut out. Um, over here, I had a little bit of trouble describing them. They're called they're, they're, they're mostly verbs. Um, there's a little cluster down here. Words that didn't really seem to show up very often. Spanish uh, showed, showed up in my data set. Um, and then you got some sort of expected clusters. Male names got all clustered together. Female names got all clustered together. Uh, I did some interesting clustering around all the numbers showed up next to each other, right next to a bunch of units that usually come after numbers, so five miles, five meters, uh, months and places and weekdays all showed up next to each other. So clearly this can actually find structure um, in a data set which is not you know, particularly like people to subreddit. This is word to tweet. Uh, we could have done this for the description of subreddits uh, compared to the people who post on them. I mean, anything that you can stick in kind of a 2D matrix, you can use these techniques on. Uh, this is uh, the interactive version of this is online as well. If you guys want to waste 15 minutes uh, mousing over and lapping. Um, so where to next? Um, this notebook is available on GitHub, um, and uh, under the data credit GitHub, you can kind of check out the code, run it on your own data. Um, you can actually use this on data that doesn't. That's not you know wide sparse matrices. If you want to, I just kind of use this as an example. Uh, you know, if you have a spreadsheet where every row is a person and you have a bunch of information about that person, there's usually a fair bit of redundancy there. You can kind of run SVD to compress it and then look at the clusters that come out. Um, these are very easy algorithms to use. Um, the three that I highlighted, truncated SVD, k-means, and t-sne, 
are kind of my personal favorites or my go-tos, but each one of these uh, is part of a family of algorithms, of which there are many in scikit-learn and in other libraries, so you can go and try different ones uh, to, see, to see what it'll give you. A lot of people use PCA instead of SVD. Um, there's a whole bunch of different clustering algorithms that kind of make more or less sense depending on your geometric intuition. Um, and there's a whole bunch of ways to take high dimensional data and, and squish it down into two. Uh, and just as one more thing, um, Scikit-learn is pretty nice. I had a lot of fun working with, uh, working with this data set, putting this demo together for you. Uh, but they can be a little hard to use. Um, sometimes you get a result, you don't really, really know why. Mostly, uh, they, they run quite slowly. So I, I ended up working with just you know, I had these very, very large matrices, 15,000 subreddits, but I kind of cut it down to two, 3,000 to get it to run in what I call I'm not bored time. You know, it's the, if I run it and it takes more than five minutes to run, I'm likely going to move on to something else before, before it finishes running. Uh, early next year, Data Chaotic will be releasing uh, what we call the machine learning database, which is basically a service or a database that you can use to put this kind of data in and run this kind of analysis uh, in under a minute rather than in sort of the 20 minutes it might take to run. So a lot of these algorithms will be prepackaged for you. Uh, in a service, you can interact with it uh, via REST call. We're working on a Python library. Um, so if you're interested in this kind of thing, please come talk to us uh, and stay tuned on the Data Credit website. That's the end of my talk. <laughs> about three minutes and 40 seconds for questions. Yep. Are you going to submit your uh, subreddit visualization to the data is beautiful subreddit? Sure. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> awesome. I definitely will. There's a if you if you Google Reddit SNA social network analysis, there's a few different ones. I actually personally have a I like mine more, but yes, I'll definitely. I've seen them too. I like yours better too. Awesome. Any other questions? Yep. So uh, that accurate thing you're working on? Uh, can we host it ourselves? Uh, we're looking to release a Docker container that you can launch yourself, uh, most likely under a non-commercial license first, and then we'll work out better licensing terms uh, as we iterate. But yes, you'll definitely be able to get your hands on it and, uh, and play with it. Non-commercial, like you won't be able to make money off of running it. Yep. With your uh, tweets, does that manually identify plugs you hit, or do you use some sort of ontology? Uh, no, no, these are definitely me typing. All right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One more question. Yep. Uh, so the question is, are memes in the center because of something, or if you run the algorithm a few different times, will it give you different things? Um, Definitely, running running CSNE a couple different times will give you sort of different results. Probably not. Memes actually usually ends up in the center. I've run too many of these. Um, but uh, you know, stuff that's on the outside usually ends up on the outside. But like the fact that fitness and NDA are sort of near each other, they might land at different sort of radial points. Um, uh, centrality in this particular case doesn't really mean centrality to the network. You'll notice that the, the, what I've labeled core here is actually on the outside because really, really big subreddits are actually quite different from the rest of them so they get pushed out way to the edge. Um, the, mostly what I've noticed is that the stuff where it's kind of like an everything else bucket, it doesn't really quite know what to do with, uh, gets, gets pushed to the middle. You see that you may not be able to see it, but they're kind of the small ones. Also memes, I mean, this is just my, my knowledge of internet culture, it doesn't go down to the fine details of what things are called, so it looks like memes to me. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome Hawk in Canada. <laughs> That's a good question. Um, it could just be that there's that uh, although there's probably a strong correlation between Canada and hockey, there's probably uh, uh, also a strong correlation between sort of hockey and other things. And so yeah, I'll have to decide. Probably because hockey is also quite insular uh, as compared to other things. I did run in a few times to see if I could get hockey in Canada. Land up next. <laughs> <laughs> it, didn't, it didn't work. Out. <laughs> <laughs> Well, anyways, I definitely encourage you guys to, to, to try it. All the code's there. You don't have to run anything. Uh, the one-page HTML version is there, and you can kind of do the, the the mousing over and looking at stuff. Uh, it's sort of surprisingly fun. And we'll post the link on the website. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you.